Coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next SDL 2.0 made easy tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at the joystick or gamepad button. So the last tutorial was kind of long. I'm going to try to see if I can make it a bit shorter. Don't know how well that will work but uh, let's see how it goes. So we'll get right into it. Uh, so uh, instead of in the event section instead of asking for the uh, axis motion we're going to get the uh, joystick joy sorry SDL joy button down and so um, this will check to see if a joystick button is down and just like with uh, the keyboard and stuff like that uh, we can check to see if a if a button is up, so if it was released or not. So instead of using J axis, we're going to be using J button. So we can do the same thing and say, okay, if J button, uh, we can say which. We can, can we can check to see which controller actually pressed the button. And so uh, after we check which controller actually pressed the button, let's actually display. Uh, which button they they pressed uh, to the window so let's get the button and let's run this and let's check for buttons and let's see if anything's going wrong let's see if we're actually getting to this point in the program and we're not getting to this point so let's see what we're doing um, I just noticed I because my controller the way it's configured as you saw in the last tutorial I have to put number one so yep it's working as it should be so let's continue and let's check the console window as you can see we're getting a bunch of weird symbols uh, because these the button that it returns is a UN8 so all we're gonna do is just cast it to an integer type and then when we actually run this, we actually see what the actual physical buttons, what their numerical value is. And so uh, that's very valuable for us. So as I said in the last tutorial, if you want to ask the user to configure buttons, you can ask them to press a button and then you configure it uh, to what you need them, um, what they want it to be. So say they wanted the circle or B on the Xbox 360 controller, if they wanted that to be jump, then you can say okay press the press the jump button and they'll press their button and then you'll save that as a jump button so and you'll say okay um if the button so you'll say something like if evj button uh button is equal to the jump button obviously we don't have a variable for that but we'll say if it's equal to the jump button then jump so you can do certain things to help the user um, get the experience that they actually want and get the layout that they want instead of having predetermined layouts. Uh, so basically, buttons are are, are pretty much uh, self-explanatory. So as you can see, as you saw before, they had the you saw the button numbers on the screen. So we're just gonna say okay, if current image is equal to, uh, I mean. If the button pressed is button number zero, which is the up on the D-pad on my controller, we'll switch the image, and right here we'll say if EV uh, J button button is equal to ten, which I think is the cross button on my controller, uh, then we're gonna switch it to the third image. And so I'll press up the second image, and yep, cross is equal to uh, is gonna. Uh, is equal to button number 10 so we change it to image number 3 and uh, the rest of the buttons are self-explanatory so you can check the value of them as well um, and yeah I guess that's it I thought I would have had more to talk about but that's basically it for the button so in the next control uh, sorry in the next tutorial we're gonna be uh, looking at the game controller API uh, which is a pretty cool library uh, pretty cool API so uh, we'll, we'll look into that and then um, we'll continue from there. So anyways, uh, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Don't forget to uh, like my page on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and also uh, don't forget to sign up um, on my website as well for, um, for source code, tutorials, and other cool features. That's it, and bye for now.